Friedrich Brule Bobert um, is a truly visionary artist. Um, the origin of all of his work stems from a, a vision that he had. Um, the heavens opened up before my eyes and seven colorful suns described a circle of beauty around the mother sun. I became, and I'm not even gonna say this guy's name, <laughs> um, but it is he who does not forget. From, from then on, he tackled every field of knowledge and collected his research in manuscripts about arts and tradition, poetry, tales, religion, aesthetics, philosophy, revealing himself to be an astonishing thinker, poet, encyclopedist, creator, searching for a way to preserve and transmit the knowledge of the Bite people that he was a member of, as well as the knowledge of the entire world. He invented an alphabet of 448, well, I have 449, I think that's, that's the real number, monosyllabic pictograms to represent the phonic syllables. So you can see a couple of his pieces here. Um, that's, this is the, the first one, number one in his, in his, what they're calling alphabet, but, but I'll talk more about this a little bit later. Um, and then below is, uh, the symbol of the knowledge of the world. Um, so the technique is relatively simple. You know, he started out writing this stuff and then and then began to actually make these little uh, pictograms with um, the phonic sounds attached to them um, a little bit later. It, it, it didn't he didn't start out with this in, in 1948. He, he actually I think he began to do his drawings in um, uh, the 60s, um, but that 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 I'm not 100 percent sure of right now. But we're going to move on. And he was born in 1923 uh, in Ivory Coast. Uh, died in 2014. Um, Bobert's alphabet, um, which can transcribe all human sounds reflects the essence of his thought to achieve universality and, and unite mankind. In the 70s, ah, here we go. In the 70s, he started to transfer his thoughts to hundreds of small drawings in postcard form using a ballpoint pen and colored crayons and colored pencils. Um, these drawings, gather under the title of knowledge of the world um, to form an encyclopedia of universal knowledge and experience. Other projects such as readings from signs observed in oranges serve as visionary, a visionary record of divination. For Bobert, his drawings are representative of everything that is revealed or concealed, signs, divine thoughts, dreams, myths, the sciences, tradition. He views his role as an artist as a redemptive calling. He has stated, now that we are recognized as artists, our duty is to organize into a society and in such a way to create a framework for discussion and exchange among those who acquire and those who create. And you can see this beautiful little set of, of, um, of there, 
I I actually look at them. They 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 often have the quality of a of a tarot deck. Um, so the this one it, now okay. Uh, well, I'll go into his history a little bit more in in a moment. But but below here, uh, if you notice, the writing around the edges is all in French. So uh, he was he was fluent in French. Um, this pictographic writing on the back and face of the arm shows the march of human life, and that's that's this this pictograph at the end here. Uh, Okay. Vision divine du 11 Mars 1948. This, these were done in um, 1991. Um, these colored pencil and pen drawings on cardstock um, uh, revisited his transcendental vision of the suns dancing around a central star. Now, one of the things I wanted to um, point out at this point is a more accurate description for his characters is really a syllabary rather than an alphabet. A syllabary is a table or listing of, of syllables, specifically a series or set of written characters each one of which is used to represent a syllable. In the linguistic study of, of written languages, it is a set of written symbols that represent the syllables and that make up each word. So um, you kind of get what's going on here. Um, this I have to say, this was a real mind stretch for me to take in. You know what what is really going on here? I mean, there's there is this business between the sound of the syllable and the experiential image of uh, of the the card itself of the drawing, and and the the interchange of what that's of what that's about that that written material and the visual material merging together and trying to implicate a direct experience. Uh, let's move on and I'll show you a little bit more. Okay, um, this is Beaugray at work. Um, and, um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to say was, you know, he, he was, he went to primary school, but didn't graduate from primary school. What, what ended up happening is he, he did join the French Navy during World War II. And while he was in the Navy, he learned to write and speak French. And at the end of the war, he, got, uh, he became a cleric and, and actually worked for the government in various, <clears throat> in various uh, capacities. Um, so one of the things that that the the cardstock that he uses for his drawings is all out of um, the the cardstock that was used as a cleric when he was when he was working for in his government job, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, now he never had any formal training to to draw or paint or anything like that, but. You can see that there's a lot to these things. They are they are very sophisticated um, accumulations of 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 certain kinds a certain kind of knowledge. Um, and here here is um, one of his notebooks where basically the characters are are kind of simplified and and you know put next to the sound that correlates to it. And here we have a set of, of pieces that I just randomly chose out of his, out of his um, um, 
quote unquote alphabet. Uh, <laughs> what, what they really are is phrases and symbols. They, they are condensed images um, uh, out of the direct experience of his, of the Bete tribe, of the, of the, the, the people that he was close to. Um, so this is really capturing the culture in a way. And here is a, a fuller view of more of the, the pieces from this, this, this alphabet. Um, it's fascinating to me anyway, hopefully it's to you guys. Um, so this is quote unquote, his, his alphabet. Um, so as I said, this is really an experiential language that, that, that he's, that he's portraying here. And, you know, the, the, the diversity of of the images within within his rather kind of limited means, I find you know really inspirational. A lot of the outsider art is is very limited in its scope. There's a certain kind of stylization that 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 limits the the range of the work, and I don't find that with his stuff. There there's they are they are rudimentary, but they communicate very differently, very different feelings and very different ideas. And these are more of the kind of um, uh, more elaborate, divination and and um um uh kind of story images that that he comes to work with after after he establishes his, his alphabet he starts to you know explore these different elements um you know it's really the diversity that that he that he brings to this he's a true this guy was a true visionary um he he actually is um the the second african artist to be shown that i know of um at the museum of modern art um there there were there have been other outsider artists as as you know you know i i just did yokum uh not long ago um but there are very few contemporary african artists that they've shown at the museum of modern art which is something that's a question mark uh, they'll get around to it anyway um i just i just find these shapes really beautiful and really you know, they're they're very they're very different in different contexts. Um, by the way, if you have any questions, put it in the chat, and I will try and address them. Um, as I said, most of this is in French around the outside. I can't read French, but I did do some translating, and the one on the, on the right is a yellow woman carrying her baby on her back. <laughs> uh, I don't know where the art ciné comes into it, but whatever. <laughs> okay, and again, uh, men come running to admire this angelic beauty. Yes, she is Laotian. So one of the things he's trying to do is bring in all the cultures trying to say that this is this is yes this is Avorian, but it's also 
universal. It's 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 a it's a planetary language that he's that he's involved in. Um, never refuse the hand that greets the green man saluting the white man. Um, my wife pointed out that the hand around that white man's neck looked like he might want to strangle him a bit. I'll 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 let that be for what it's worth, but. Um, one of the things that that I don't pick up on is is a lot of the kind of um, post-colonial rage in in this work. It's really very transcendent stuff. And if you look at this image, what we've got here is purple people with a yellow baby, uh, blue people with a yellow baby. Um, yellow people with a brown baby. So he's he is trying to say, you know, there is a universality to humanity and and he he is kind of fostering that notion in his work. Um, let's see. It's really a melding of the races. Okay, uh, and here is the blood of the horizontal lines, the vertical, the living, the spirits. Not sure where that goes, but you know, I I get that I get that he's 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 there's a there's a the implication of a story that's beyond what we know. Uh, <laughs> I love this, you know, this dance around the tree. Okay. So one of the things that I wanted to bring in is is basically um the notion of the the evolution of of language and written language and characters and here we have the kind of evolution of egyptian hieroglyphs my wife pointed this out to me too last night and tried to get me to pay some attention and i was i was so focused that i was i was like pushing it aside at the time but it really is something which which I think that that Gobert was affected by in some way, but his work is consolidating, is concentrating, is creating a language in one man's lifetime that that the Egyptians and and the the Islamic texts and the Chinese characters took centuries and millennium to evolve. So there is a great deal of um, uh, energy and, and concentration to bring about this kind of, of a form that he has created. But you can see the evolution of the of the image into the shorthand that becomes the the usable language, written language. And here are a set of Chinese characters and the, the kind of rudimentary evolution of those into what they've become. Now, as I think you all know, when you place characters next to each other, they, they, they interact, they change the meaning and, and relationship. So um, that's something that, that is going on in Bobert's work also. Let's see. Ah, here, here's uh, the 
our our um, uh, alphabet and the evolution of our alphabet into what it's become, the Latin script. Now, I'm not a linguist or anything like that. So this is far beyond my scope of expertise, but I find it fascinating. And I, I have to say it really stretched my mind to try and grasp what this guy actually took on in creating what he created. Okay, and the evolution of Mondrian's tree from the naturalistic representation to, um, oh, we got a question here. Oh, great chart. <laughs> um, so the, this is the evolution of Mondrian's tree into his universal language. And, and that's really what Mondrian was thinking of when he was creating these, these wonderful abstract pieces. It was really an, uh, you know, something that, that reached to the essence of what it was that was underneath that life force. That was what he was after. And I think Robert um, is, is on the same page. Okay, this is another African artist. Um, uh, and El Salahi, um, the prayer, the, this piece is, you know, there's, there's um, the Islamic script element in, 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 in this piece. The, the centerpiece, the reborn sounds of childhood dreams, number one. Now, this is a gigantic piece. It's eight foot six by eight foot six. Um, but it has this um, ancestor ghost quality to it. The reborn child dream, childhood dreams, the, the resonant history of Africa. Um, and and then there's this there's this piece on this untitled piece on the left that integrates the the, the direct handprint and the and the the Islamic script. Very interesting. And so these notions are 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 out there. And and you know, Bobert is not off on his own in the woods. Uh, <laughs> Okay, and to speak to another explorer of the cosmos, Paul Clay, um, and the, the ducks, this, this piece, you know, the integration of, of actual script and imagery, um, just the, the, the playfulness and depth and resonance of, of of Paul Clay's work is always, you know, just a joy for me to look at. So I threw them in here, but they do definitely relate to what Robert is about. And, and I'll, I will show you a little bit more here. There's another one. I love this bird garden. I found this piece on online and just had to throw it in there, but it, it definitely is that kind of narrative aspect of uh, Robert's um, uh, little story cards, and um, you know they they we don't know what this what this um, cryptic story is, but we get that there is one there. Um, okay, and this is again a Paul Clay once emerged from the gray, gray of night and the integration of, of, of the script of the actual um, letters and color and, and the interaction between those forms. On the, on the right is, I'm gonna butcher this guy's name, Alighiero. Boetti, Iboetti. Um, he was a 
a um, an Italian artist who was part of a movement there that was um, uh, called Art Provera. Um, it was kind of a mix between pop art and and Dadaism. Dadaism we touched on earlier with. Um, um, uh, Tober, um, um, and and she was definitely, you know, there. There was that whole business of the pattern and the integration of 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 letters into the the um, the work. But this is also a woven piece. This is this is. Um, um, actually what is it it it's um uh embroidery i believe and so boete and and bobert communicated with each other they they started out writing letters to one another and they ended up actually collaborating on some pieces with one another that's one of the reasons why i brought them in here and Boete acknowledged his his love of Paul Clay and and that that sense of color and shape and movement. Um, okay, and here we have Boete on the on the right, his map, <laughs> and and on the left you have the knowledge of the world with Bobert um, and these kind of symbols that that are that are you know basically taken from different cultures and integrated. And again, very unconventional um, um, use of of materials. It's a you know the um, boete was was you know basically doing doing the, this needlework this this um, um, but it, it's also one of the things he was coming to to this work with a a sense of of being in the glut of imagery of of having um um to take take it apart and put it back together again where barbre was creating a new thing a language that was new, where Boete was taking apart the existing imagery and existing language and reassembling it. Um, I'm going to leave you here for one second. I want to go close my window because there's music going on out there and I hope it doesn't get too loud. So uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry about that technical glitch. <laughs> so uh, here we have in the world. Um, the, the, this fellow was is very inventive. There, there, there actually was a show that that my wife and I saw up at um, Magazino, and his work was in that show. Um, and she was knocked out by it, and I kind of just didn't see it. Um, but now, now I'm looking at this stuff, and I'm, I'm, you know, getting there. There are certain textural things that he was that he was doing, and certain contextual things that he was doing that relate to Boabre 
and and kind of reassembling the you know the exhausted imagery in a different way to make it a visually alive visually vital uh okay men come running to admire this angelic beauty <laughs> if any of you can read french you you may have a different interpretation from what what i come up with but these are these are what i got from throwing it into my translator on the computer and then this this next one is called bereavement very interesting Here it is, a pictograph depicting the dormant, lucent, night tree bush cross spirit. It's kind of scat poetry. <laughs> I'm just going to let us sit with a few of these. Unlike many of the outsider artists, um, you know, the self-taught and all that, I think this fellow's vision is, is, is very um, expansive. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it, it really does, um, um, relate directly to his experience around him, but it, but it also has this kind of universal underpinning. And, and so, So this show at, at the Museum of Modern Art is very large. There are a lot of pieces in it. Um, um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how many, but it, it seems like there, there are well over 100, probably more like 400 of these, of these small drawings in that show. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but I definitely want to go and see it. And here is a display of one of the rooms at MoMA. Okay. Frederick Brule, Obey, uh, World Unbound. It's on through August 13th. Um, and basically I, I put this um, website in here. Um, I know you can't you can't grab it off of here, but it it's it's um, it's C A A C A R T dot com. And and it has on that site some um, uh, Vimeos of of people practicing his his um, his actual language, pointing to different parts of their body when they're describing, they're speaking the 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 noun, they're speaking the syllables, and pointing to different parts of their body that that the sounds relate to. There's a woman um, pointing to different vegetables and and different different objects on a table um it a lot of the clips are in french unfortunately and a lot of the talks that are out there are in french so i don't have a lot of um um visuals to give you as far as 
that part is concerned. There's not a lot of um, YouTubes that I can send you to, to check out. But um, uh, I, I think this is a fabulous show. And there's also the Red Studio on at the same time at MoMA. So it's worth a trip in, into the city to get to see, you know, this work and, and that, that wonderful Matisse installation. Um, so that is gonna about do it for this, for this week. Um, I will, let's see. Oh, if, if you're, if you're free on Sunday and want to come and hear a talk from, um, uh, Xander, uh, Maser's, um, book and see the exhibition at the Chappaqua Library, I'd love to see you and, um, uh, we'll have some wine and cheese and that, you know, if there are any questions, just ask at this point, but I'm not seeing anything in the chat. So I will see you. Let's see, New York Times Review, African artists who map the worlds. Yes, I read that article, the New York Times article, and it was, it, it was actually that journalist that pointed out the lack of contemporary black artists being shown at the Museum of Modern Art. And they got to correct that. Um, <laughs> anyway, there's, there's some fabulous stuff that's being done. Um, so in two weeks, we'll be doing Matisse. So have a good weekend. And um, hopefully I'll see you then or see you on Sunday. Bye-bye.